الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم سلام أرسله بالهدى والدين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم During the month of Shawwal, there is an anniversary, an important anniversary, and that is the istishhad of the martyrdom of our sixth Imam, Al Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Imam al Sadiq was given this title by his grandfather, the Prophet wasallam, when he said, according to Imam Zayn al-Abidin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا وُلِدَ إِذَا وُلِدَ إِبْنِ جَعْفَرُ بْنُ مُحَمَّدْ ابن علي ابن الحسين ابن علي ابن أبي طالب فسموه الصادق when this son is going to be born and this is 70 years after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet died in the year 11 of Hijrah and Imam al-Sadiq was born in 83 83 Hijrah almost 7 decades between the Prophet and the, the birth of the Imam. But of course, the Prophet, through his knowledge that has been divinely inspired to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will allow the Prophet to know what will happen in the future. So he prophesied the birth of the Imam. And he gave him this title. Actually, the titles of the Imams, all the Imams were given to them before their birth by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Allahumma Some people say that the Shia tradition has been attributed to Imam Sadiq. They are named the Ja'fari tradition versus Maliki and Hanafi and Hanbali and Shafi'i. So if there is a gap between, 70 years gap, between the death of the Prophet and the birth of Imam al-Sadiq, how can we connect, we the Shias, the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, to the Prophet through an Imam who has a gap, 70 years gap between him and the Prophet? Very good question. The answer is simple. The answer is an Imam al Sadiq is not separated from the Prophet, physically separated, but theologically, 
religiously, mentally, spiritually. He's connected to the Prophet through his forefathers, through his father, Imam al-Baqir, Imam al-Baqir, through his father, Imam Zayn al-Abideen, through Imam Hussein, and Imam Hassan, through Ali ibn Abi Talib, who is the gate to the city of the knowledge. And the city of the knowledge is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there is no separation between the Imams and the Prophets. The Imam himself, the sixth Imam, Imam al salih says, Hadithi, Hadithu Abi, what I am telling you, it's what my father has told me. Wa Hadithu Abi, Hadithu Jaddi. And what Imam Baqir said to the people is, what Imam Zayn al-Abideen said to them. What Imam Zayn al-Abideen said to them is the hadith of his father, Imam Hussein. The hadith of Imam Hussein is the hadith of his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. And the hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen is the hadith and the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And where can you find a chain of narrators, such a golden chain of narrators? of such a pious, reliable, trustworthy people like the family of the Prophet, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. Where can you find? So when we say Qala al-Sadiq wa Qala al-Baqir as if we are saying Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They do not invent. They are not inventors of hadith. Everything they say, everything they produce, Everything they give, everything they preach is the message of the Prophet ﷺ. This Imam was raised when he was born and he was born during the time of Bani Umayyah. Fifty years after that, the regime of Bani Umayyah collapsed. Another regime came up, the regime of Bani Abbas. So the Imam lived almost 50 years of his life during Bani Umayyah and the last 10, 15 or 17 years of his life during the time of Bani Abbas. The last 50 years of the regime of Bani Umayyah, five, 10 caliphs or caliphs or khulafa of Bani Umayyah were ruling during these 50 years of Imam's life. And the first 15, the last 15 years of his life, two Khulafa of Bani Abbas were ruling. The first Khalifa is Abu Abbas al Safah, and the second one was Al Mansur al Dawaniqi or Mansur al Abbasi, his brother. They were two brothers. And he was the one who poisoned the Imam and ultimately caused the death and the martyrdom of. Al Imam al Salih in the city of Al Madina al Munawwara, and he is buried. Those of you who have been to the Baqir, you can see the grave of the sixth Imam in the cemetery of Al Baqir. His mother, his father was Al Imam al Baqir, he was raised during his time, and also his grandfather Zayn al Abideen, alayhim as salatu was salam, and then his mother is also was one of the scholars in the city of Medina. Her name is Ummu Farwa. Her father is Al Qasim, another scholar. The son of another scholar by the name of Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr is the son of the first caliph, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Qahaf. Abu Bakr married Asma bin Umais before he married her, Asma was the wife of Ja'far bin Abi Talib, the younger brother of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Ja'far bin Abi Talib was martyred in the Battle of Mu'ta in southern Jordan today, the north part of the Arabian Peninsula. His grave is there in the city of Mu'ta. After his death, the death of Ja'far, Abu Bakr married his wife, Asma bin Humais. And then, in the year 10th of Hijrah, Muhammad was born. Muhammad, whose father is Abu Bakr, and his mother is Asma bint Umais. But then Muhammad, when he was only three or four years old, his father Abu Bakr died. So Imam Ali alayhi salam married Asma bint Umais. 
while Muhammad was a little boy. So he is the foster son, the foster child of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Biologically, he's the son of Abu Bakr. But spiritually and mentally and religiously, he is the product of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. So Imam Ali raised him. He stood with Imam Ali, loyal to his stepfather, Imam Ali alayhi salam, and he was fighting alongside Imam Ali in the battle of uh, Jamal and the battle of Safin. Then Imam Ali appointed him the governor of Egypt. When he arrived into Egypt, Amr ibn al-As murdered Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Of course, at the order of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Muhammad was only 28 years old when he died in Egypt. So, Muhammad had a son called Al-Qasim who became a scholar. Um Farwa is the daughter of Al-Qasim. Um Farwa is the mother of Al-Imam Al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam. And I mentioned last night here that Imam Al-Sadiq is, is the mentor, the leader, the teacher, the supervisor, if you will, of two of the great Imams of the Madahib. One of them is Abu Nu'man, Abu, Abu Hanifa, and Nu'man ibn Thabit, and Nu'man ibn Thabit al Kabuli. He is born in Kabul, Afghanistan, the leader of the, of the uh, Hanafi tradition, Abu Hanifa, and Nu'man ibn Thabit al Zuqi al Kabuli. So the Imam was his mentor, his teacher, and also the mentor and the teacher of. Malik ibn Anas. Malik ibn Anas is the Imam of the Maliki Madhab who was born in the city of Al Madinah. And during the time of Bani al Abbas, he became the sole Mufti. La yufta wa Malikun fil Madina. Bani al Abbas, they issued a decree that no one has the right, including the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, including Imam al Salih, no one has the right to issue a fatwa while Malik, Imam Malik, is present. Imam Malik was the, also the teacher of Al Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn al Sadiq, and this is what he says about his teacher, Imam Malik. This is what he says. I studied under him for a period of time. Every time I come to visit him or see him, I see him in, in three, these three conditions. إِمَّا مُصَلِّنْ وَإِمَّا صَائِمٍ وَإِمَّا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ Either he was praying or fasting or reciting the Qur'an. وَمَا رَأَيْتُهُ يُحَدِّثُ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِلَّا عَنْ طَهَارِ Whenever he gives the hadith, whenever he transmits a hadith on behalf of the Prophet, he was on tahara, on wudu, on wudu. He would never say a hadith on behalf of the Prophet without wudu. Illa ala tahara. Wa kana la yatakallamu fi ma la ya'ni. My teacher always, I see him. He does not, he does not speak about things that are not related to him. Things that are, are fruitless. He would not delve into these issues. وَكَانَ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْعُبَّادِ الزُّحَادِ he, won, he was one of the great ascetic. Zuhad means the person who has no attachment to this dunya. His focus is not this dunya. His focus is the akhir. He's focusing on his akhir, the second chapter of his life, the eternal chapter. وَلَقَدْ وَلَقَدْ حَجَجْتُ مَعَهُ سَنَةً فَلَمَّا أَتَى الشَّجَرَةَ أَحْرَمْ One year I was with him performing the Hajj when we arrived Masjid al-Shajara for the purpose of Ihram, the beginning of the journey of Hajj. فَلَمَّا أَرَادَ أَنْ يُلَبِّي كَادَ يُخْشَى عَلَيْهِ When he was about to say لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ He was about to pass out, out of reverence and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ لَا بُدَّ لَكَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ I said to him, we cannot pass this station and go into Mecca. 
Unless you say the talbiya labbayk, Allahumma labbayk. He answered, the Imam answered, فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخْشَى أَنْ يُقَالَ أَنْ يُقَالَ لِي لَا لَبَّيْكَ وَلَا سَعْدَيْكَ I fear that if I say لبيك اللهم لبيك here, my Lord, I'm coming to you. Allah says, don't come to me. I don't want to listen. I don't want to hear your voice. This is a lesson of, for us, a lesson of humility and how to, how to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lesson for us. لا لبيك ولا سعدك. This is the testimony of Imam Malik ibn Anas on behalf of Al Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam. So our madhab, our school of thought was formalized and crystallized and formulated and took shape by this, the great Imam. Our madhab, it, it connects to the Prophet but through Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq used to speak on behalf of the Prophet. Every lesson, every hadith he says was the hadith of the Prophet. And he gathered the scholars who learned under his instructions. They gathered 400 axioms. Arba'ma'atu asl. Asl is like a theory, if you will, a juristic theory in fiqh and usul. And then after that, these theories were gathered in four books. These four books are the sources of hadith in the Ahlul Bayt school of thought. In the school of Ahlul Bayt of thought, the, 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 four major, the four major sources of hadith are number one, Kitab al Kafi. The Shaykh al Kulaini. Number two, Kitab Man La Yahduruhu al Faqih, the Shaykh al Saduq. Number three and four, Kitab al Tahdib, Wal Istibsar, the Shaykh al Tusi. These four books, Al Kafi, Man La Yahduruhu al Faqih, Al Tahdib, Al Istibsar, are the books that gathers the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Zain al Abideen, Muhammad al Baqir, Ja'far al Saliq. والسلام, and also the rest of the Imams. These are the sources of hadith in the Shia tradition and this is why the, the Shia tradition is called the Ja'fari because the one who crystallized this madhab and put the final touches on this school of thought was Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq on the 25th of his, of the month of Shawwal this passing month is the anniversary of his martyrdom. We salute our Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam and his family and his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we play, we, we, we repay our allegiance to the school of Ahlul Bayt, to the school that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified and refined them in the Holy Quran, when he said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Innama yurid Allah liyudhiba ankum al-ritsa ahl al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tathira. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-asr inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa al-ladhina aman wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli bayti al-tayyibin al-tahirin.